this video, we're going to demo doing inference for comparing more than two means, in other words, doing ANOVA. The data for this video come from the Wolf River in Tennessee. We have uh, aldrin concentration, this is an insecticide, from water samples collected at the bottom, mid-depth, and surface of the Wolf River in Tennessee. Let's upload our data into our studio. I'm going to locate the data file on my computer. It's a CSV file. And once it's been uploaded here, I can see it in my files pane. And the next step is to import this data set into my workspace. I want to make sure that the first row shows up as a header row. If it doesn't, chances are your radio button is selected as no, and you want to, you want to convert that back to yes. There are 30 observations in my data set. Each row, in other words, each case is a water sample. We have the concentration of aldrin in that water sample, as well as a categorical variable indicating whether the water sample was collected at the bottom. There are 10 of those. Mid-depth, another 10 of those or surface another 10 of those. In order to um, do this inference, we want to make sure that the inference function is loaded. And you can check that by checking if the inference function shows up in your workspace. And the research question of interest is, is there a difference between the mean aldrin concentrations among the three levels? So let's check. We want to do a hypothesis test, or in other words, ANOVA for this. The function is called inference. My data the explanatory variable is in the Aldrin data set, and that's the concentration. Remember, this is always a numerical variable. And my explanatory variable, in other words, my grouping variable, is depth. Sorry, the name of the data set is Aldrin, and the name of the variable is depth. I'm comparing means, so the estimate is specified as the mean. I'm doing a hypothesis test. And my alternative hypothesis for an ANOVA is always greater than because the f-test in ANOVA is always one-sided since the f-distribution is right-skewed and the f-statistic is always a positive number. It's the ratio of the between-group variability, which is always a positive number, and the within-group variability, which is another positive number. Since we have only learned how to do ANOVA using a theoretical approach, I'm going to be specifying method as theoretical. Let's take a look at the output here. My response variable is numerical, and my explanatory variable is categorical. The summary statistics are given for each one of the three groups. There are 10 observations at the bottom, 10 mid-depth, and 10 in the surface. We have the average Aldrin concentration at the bottom of 6.04, 5.04 for mid-depth and surface 4.2. We also have the standard deviations associated, associated with these levels. The box plot down here also shows us that the average concentration at the bottom is slightly higher than the mid-depth, which is slightly higher than the surface. My null hypothesis in ANOVA is that all means are equal, and the alternative is that at least one mean is different. Next, let's take a look at our ANOVA table. My number of degrees of freedom for the grouping variable which is the number of levels minus 1, that's 3 minus 1, that's 2. And my total degrees of freedom, which is not shown in this table but would have been 27.229, is basically the number of observations, that's 30 minus 1. And the residual degrees of freedom is simply the balance of the two. Sum of squares is calculated. And using those and the mean square values, we can using those and the degrees of freedom, we can calculate the mean square. For example, sum of squares for the group is 16.961 divided by 2 is going to give me this mean square value. Similarly, the mean square of the residuals, or in other words, the error term, is calculated as the sum of squares of the error term divided by the degrees of freedom associated with that. My F score is simply my mean square group. 8.4 divided by mean square error, roughly 1.4. That's an F statistic of 6.13 for an F distribution with degrees of freedom 2 for the numerator and 27 for the denominator. We can see the F distribution in the little sketch here, and we can see that this observed F statistic is a pretty unlikely value, and hence my P value is very small, meaning that I should reject the null hypothesis and conclude that at least one mean is different. 
since we don't actually know, since ANOVA doesn't actually tell us which mean is different, once we find a significant result using ANOVA, the next step is to do pairwise tests. These are t-tests between the um, pairs of the three groups, so that's bottom and mid-depth, bottom and surface, and mid-depth and surface, using a pooled standard deviation that comes from the mean square error. So let's take a look at this little matrix here. I have a matrix of p-values. The first p-value, 0.0706, is simply the p-value for a hypothesis test comparing the average for the bottom and mid-depth. And since that's a high value, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, when we're doing these pairwise tests, we want to make sure that we're using a modified alpha level. So if the original alpha level was 5%, and I'm doing three tests here, I want to compare these p-values to the modified alpha level of roughly 0.0167. So 0.07 is definitely greater than that, so I would fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there probably isn't a difference between the average aldrin concentrations between bottom and mid-depth. Next is comparison of bottom and surface. And this p-value is actually smaller than the modified alpha level, so I could reject that null hypothesis and conclude that there might be a difference between bottom and surface. And the last test is comparing mid-depth and surface, and that, that p-value is simply too large again, and I would fail to reject that null hypothesis for this pairwise t-test comparing mid-depth and surface levels. Since there is not a way to do a confidence interval using ANOVA because there's not a parameter that we're estimating, we're pretty much done with the analysis. In fact, if I try to change the type from hypothesis test to a confidence interval, the function will give me an error saying that confidence interval is undefined in this case. In the case of comparing two means, we can do a confidence interval because the parameter of interest there is difference between these two means. In ANOVA, we have more than two means that we're comparing, and hence there is not really a parameter to estimate, so confidence interval is not meaningful. I'm done with my analysis, so the last thing I want to make sure I do is incorporate all of this in my report. So in my inference section, I just include the inference function that I use, as I specified it earlier. Once again, there is no confidence interval, there is no simulation-based inference that we have learned for ANOVA, so I'm pretty much done with my analysis. and. I just want to include some text introducing my data set, doing some exploratory data analysis, going through the ANOVA output, and very importantly, going through the pairwise t-test output as well, and a brief conclusion, and I'm done with my project. I hope that this video has been useful for comparing more than two means using ANOVA using R. Thank you for watching.